Team World, today I'm going to demonstrate decentralized voting on the Bitcoin blockchain. And actually, uh, a Pertis, with a Pertis, uh, you can do this on pretty much any blockchain. Uh, but today I'm using the, oh, sorry, today I'm using the Bitcoin testnet uh, right over here. So uh, let's first browse to a uh, decentralized election that I've already uh, created. Paste in the uh, rule here. All right, what do we got? Who should be the next president of the USA? So as you can see, I've already created, uh, uh, I've created a United States uh, 2016 election, but I included some candidates that, uh, I included all the candidates that I could find that are currently uh, votable uh, throughout the states. Donald Trump, Gary Johnson, Hillary Clinton, and Jill Stein. I also included a, uh, a blank space for uh, write-in candidates. And if you look to the right, you can see that uh, there's already been some votes cast uh, since I uh, etched this uh, election. And this election uh, was at, etched uh, just uh, you know a few moments ago. So I've been doing some testing. Uh, so uh, in order to uh, cast your vote on a decentralized election using a Pertis, uh, you basically browse to it and then uh, select your option. I'm gonna select Jill Stein. And when you select an option, you, you can notice that uh, it created a script down here on the bottom. You will have to copy the script and paste it into the Apertus message window in order to cast a vote. Uh, so currently, this page here is, is a web page, and this space over here in Apertus is actually a Windows form, and there is no uh, communication between the two at this point. We are in the process of converting Apertus into more of a uh, web-delivered application, uh, and when that's complete, uh, there will be no barrier here between Windows Form and web, uh, and this will happen a bit more streamlined. But for now, you do have to copy and paste it out. So I've uh, created the script, I've pasted it, and if you look at the script, uh, you'll notice that really all it is is two uh, Bitcoin test addresses. Uh, and also, so let's click on some of these also. These are the ones, Donald Trump, if you look, uh, has the same address here, but it's a different address here. Uh, so the top address is actually uh, associated with the question that uh, you are answering. And then the bottom address uh, is actually the, uh, is how you are answering it. And you could, uh, in this scenario, uh, it's only, uh, it only actually allows you to pick one, but uh, you could, for instance, if I wanted to vote for Jill Stein uh, and Hillary Clinton, uh, I could uh, I could copy them both, uh, and this would actually uh, place two votes. The, now, this particular uh, election that I created is wide open, uh, meaning that uh, I haven't put any restrictions on on who can vote, uh, it, so it really wouldn't work uh, properly for a national election. Uh, in that scenario, uh, they would uh, that election would be signed, uh, and also uh, they would be using the trust center to only allow uh, votes through uh, verified trusted uh, machines or voting machines. Uh, but for this scenario, we're just allowing anyone to vote, uh, anyone that has uh, Bitcoin testnet coins uh, can participate. Uh, all right, so I have copied that script into the message window and now I wanna vote and you'll notice I'm voting for both Hillary Clinton and Jill Stein. So, if this works uh, properly, uh, this should increment to four and this should increment to 13. Uh, by default, uh, when, I, when I cast, when I etch something, uh, this information wouldn't normally show up for me. Uh, but so if I want the poll to, uh, the poll, which is actually an object that is, exists on the blockchain, to be included in my receipt of my vote, I have to link the the poll the uh, the actual uh, poll to my vote and to do that uh, basically you just have to click the link button over here and what the link button does is it allows you to include one or many other objects that have been etched onto the blockchain into your uh, it allows you to kind of append them into your own etching without actually having to waste any uh, data uh, etching the whole thing. Uh, all that will be wasted is the, the amount of text that it takes to uh, to store a transaction ID. Uh, so I've linked it. Uh, I've put my vote in here, and I'm going to vote. Uh, 
uh, so I'll select etch, which is very, which is basically the save button, and we'll see what happens. Uh, we will get a prompt uh, letting us know that uh, when we do things in Apertus, they might take a lot of time because we are still in the process of kind of uh, programming it, and at this point, uh, it's not threaded as well as it could be. So uh, my advice to you is, uh, if you're going to etch something, no matter what it is, just be patient and wait. If you're, uh, for instance, if you're uh, etching something that's a, a, mega, a megabyte uh, or higher, you know, that could take an entire day or more. If you're etch, etch, etching anything uh, under about 40K, that's going to happen pretty fast. Uh, so there, there isn't a known limitation, but there is definitely, uh, uh, it definitely takes a substantial amount of time to put uh, files that are over uh, half a meg, for instance. All right, so we'll answer yes to that. If you don't, if you if you if you know that and you don't want to see this box constantly, uh, you can uh, check the uh, uncheck the save warning box down here, and that won't show up for you anymore. So we'll say yes, and this is in real time. So we'll see how long it takes to uh, cast a vote for two people on this decentralized election. I like to make these videos uh, raw, so uh, you're gonna get all of my uh, mistakes along with all of my successes. Uh, so uh, just bear with me here. <laughs> all right, looks like we've updated uh, and you can see that uh, we did increment on both the Hillary Clinton uh, four and also the Green Party. Let's just verify that. Yep, we were at three, uh, now we're at four. Uh, so that's uh, a demonstration of how you would cast a, a decentralized vote uh, an election. And I cast this vote uh, completely anonymously. Uh, you could, uh, for instance, if you, you know, if you really were excited about your vote and you wanted to tell everybody who you voted for, you could do that in a very public manner uh, and make that, uh, make your identity permanently associated with your vote uh, by uh, also etching your, your profile along with your vote. So we'll copy this. So I'm going to select my profile and also my signature. Uh, and I'm going to, once again, I'm going to attach the poll so I can see the results along with uh, on my receipt. Uh, so once I etch this, I will get a transaction and that transaction is basically my receipt for my vote. Uh, and if you would like to see the results in real time, uh, you, know, you can basically save your receipt, uh, and then anytime you come back here, you can see how, you know, how it's progressing. So we will etch this now along with a profile and a signature and see what happens there. Uh, another feature that I can use, uh, which will prevent uh, me having to actually etch this text, because really these are just commands, uh, is a new feature that's associated with 0.3.11, uh, uh, and that is the no message. Uh, and that's that's checked right now, and that's why uh, you don't see this message show up on my etching. If this wasn't checked, uh, it would look something similar to this, so I'll, I'll remove this no message and then show you uh, what we see then. And again, this is etching uh, my profile. It's also signing my transaction. Uh, so it might take a few more seconds. I think it's probably gonna take around 20 or 30 seconds. So just be patient here. Uh, I suppose I could, uh, maybe in the future, I will uh, remove this silence, but I, I, I like to just make these and put them out there. I, I try not to edit them that much. Okay. So now that we removed the no message, you can see that my I actually etched uh, the script on top along with my vote. Uh, I linked it, so my vote, uh, the vote poll uh, came along with my receipt. Uh, but something new down here is now you can see that I've signed it, and also I used my own uh, decentralized profile. Uh, so now this is a permanent record of the vote uh, cast, and uh, and I could keep this and hang it on my wall and hope that uh, Jill Stein gets it. Uh, so now, so that's basically a full demonstration of how to cast uh, uh, a vote uh, using a Pertis. You might uh, wonder how did I create this election in the first place? So I'm going to demonstrate that right now. Uh, to create an election, you have to uh, create a small text file called INQ. Uh, 
uh, and it has no, extent, no extension. It's just I and Q straight. Let's open this up to show you what's inside there. Now, this is what's inside the file, and I want to put it side by side to the actual uh, election so you can see what's going on here. So the very first line of the file is uh, consists of an, an address that uh, you uh, that I generated by just going into my uh, Bitcoin Core testnet wallet into my receiving addresses, and I just uh, said new, entered my question there, uh, and then what I got was uh, let's see where are you uh, here. Here's the address that was uh, created for me uh, by that. So I copied that address over into this text file after I uh, created the question. Uh, and similarly, to, to make to to uh, put the the proposed answers of a poll, uh, you would create additional addresses for each answer that you would uh, like to give uh, the people who are taking the poll or election. And then to the right of the equal sign, uh, you would put the free text of that uh, answer. And it's uh, it's really uh, that's really all. Uh, there is to it uh, to create the write-in on the bottom, which I can demonstrate a write-in uh, next. Uh, you basically put in an address and equals, and then just leave it blank. To publish this uh, election out onto a blockchain, you just have to etch it. Uh, so we'll do that now. Now. If you were, if this was a real election, uh, you would want to sign uh, this uh, because signing uh, signing your etching allows the end user, the people who are going to be interacting with it later, it allows them to start to to establish you as a trusted partner. Uh, so as you begin in signing more and more things, uh, if someone trusts you, they uh, they can trust your signature, and then when they come to this transaction ID, the poll will will show unfiltered. If you etch this without signing it, uh, it's going to look something more like uh, this to the end user. Oh! <laughs> This one, this one actually, uh, this one is signed, so it's it's showing up. So I I, I have to show you one that uh, that isn't signed. Okay, so this one is not signed. Sorry about that. Uh, we'll hit enter there, and yes. Okay, there we go. So by default, the uh, INQ, the inquiry uh, files, uh, are filtered out. So in order for those to come through and and, and allow the end user to uh, see them, uh, you want to sign those uh, and. Uh, You'll want to establish yourself somehow as a trustworthy source for people. <laughs> that might be harder than uh, anything else. So let's rebuild. Let's uh, remove the filter and rebuild this. And uh, we are going to put a brand new one in, in here. So. When I etch this, uh, this will not create uh, a new election since I'm using the identical addresses that I had used before. Uh, it really will just create a new placeholder for a view into the results of that election. Uh, however, if I was to use different addresses, then you, uh, I would actually be creating a, an entire new election. Uh, so once I etch this, it's going to look pretty much identical to what you see now. Uh, keep actually, I'll, I'll change this through a little bit so it so you so you can believe me. <laughs> Let's change the text. Uh, let's see, Donald, Tuck, Gary. Gary. I'm just making things up here. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> okay, so I've uh, changed the text on this so you can kind of uh, get an understanding of what's happening. Uh, I'll remove the filter is unchecked. 
Uh, this is the new, this is actually, uh, it's a new view of the election because it's gonna, it's gonna give me the same data back. However, it's gonna be different text. Uh, so let's try that. And you don't necessarily need to have a profile, just a signature. All right. Let's see how long this takes. Okay, so you can see that my message uh, came through on top. And then also you can see this is a, a new view with updated uh, names, Donald Duck, Gary Turtle, Hillary Bear, and Jill Unicorn. Uh, so there you go. That's kind of a demonstration on how simple it is to create a, an election and also to participate in uh, decentralized elections uh, using a, the Apertus client. Uh, in production, in a production or in a, in a national uh, election, the uh, the trust center would be used heavily to uh, to weed out uh, votes that uh, weren't authenticated. So, for instance, at your polling place, uh, you would walk in. Uh, uh, there would be a human there who would verify that you ha that you're eligible to vote, uh, and then you would walk to a machine that is uh, that is already configured uh, with a trusted signature uh, in order to cast a vote, and then you would vote on that machine, and only that machine's votes uh, would be uh, counted. If other people were to find the appropriate addresses to cast a vote and just uh, cast it themselves. They would just be filtered out uh, during the, the the overall totaling uh, of the vote uh, uh, by the election officials. So uh, even as is, uh, it's a bit clunky and it probably wouldn't scale to uh, the full uh, United you know United States election yet. Uh, but certainly, as it is in its current state, uh, this could be used. Uh, Definitely, it could be used by Congress to uh, record uh, their votes uh, on, on topics. One, one also interesting uh, feature uh, with uh, Apertus is that not only can you cast a vote, uh, but you, you could also uh, cast the reason of why you voted uh, along with it. And I think that especially uh, in Congress, this might be a nice feature because they could uh, embed the reason for their vote uh, along with their vote uh, and have it kind of be permanently uh, included along with it. So uh, I'm gonna vote for this one, I'm voting for Hillary Bear. Uh, and the reason I'm, uh, I'm giving a reason, uh, which is I, I love bears. Uh, and so we will uh, catch that. Uh, similar to a text, you could also attach uh, full images, documents, videos. You could attach anything that you'd, you would like to with this vote. Uh, and make it uh, permanently associated into the future. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this quick demonstration of uh, decentralized voting uh, using Apertus. And keep in mind, uh, even though this uh, scenario was done on Bitcoin testnet, uh, this uh, functionality uh, can be uh, done with pretty much, uh, pretty much any altcoin that exists today that was uh, that was based off of Bitcoin and, and so we're talking thousands of altcoins or at least hundreds uh, so all right have a great day and thanks very time thanks very much for your time